So this is Saladin Salon for Ken Corso, Counter Depressor, and Neapolitan Mastino Historical Talk. Hopefully y'all having a lovely day. Which it was a beautiful day. I should have went outside, but very tired. Like on some real stuff, worked very hard this week, so I'm taking it easy today. Probably go dog training tomorrow, or watch some dogs get trained. But anyway, regardless of the point, yo, hopefully y'all having a lovely, lovely Saturday. Check it out. Don Machetti proposed a good question today about bloodlines and et cetera. Like, what dogs are, what what dogs are, what, what is a bloodline, basically? What do your dogs consist of, consist of with a bloodline? And a lot of people really was thrown off with the question. You know what I'm saying? And that's not a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? Because if, my thing is this, people, on some real stuff. If you don't know a thing, the thing to do is ask. There's no problem and no harm in asking. Like, if you don't want nobody in your business, you know, you can message people, like, on some real stuff. Yo, like, message the big boys, so to speak. The ones that so-called have, you know, supposed to have knowledge and ask them. Propose the questions. But don't just ask that one person. Ask a multiple of people. Get your own perspective. And then, my thing to you is, get the definition of it. Google it. Yo, why would you Google and Google the... Yo, come on. With defying something on a small scale like that is going to be the right definition. Google it. Google Google the question on some real stuff and start researching. Because if you breeding corsos, and like I said, and you not knowing, but you're demanding a lot of money for your dogs, fuck you. Like, you shouldn't get that. Why should you? Like, on some real... What makes you different? Like, on some real stuff. And don't tell me, like, like... You just like you just as bad as the dude that breeds some old family red noses. Don't know they old family red noses by pedigree. Yo, I got red noses. Like what the fuck is that? Like so what? Like any pit bull could have a red nose. What are you telling me? Oh, I got blue dogs. So what are the bloodlines? Uh uh. So it's like yo, come on. You got to be able to break that thing down. You know what I'm saying? What do your dog has in the background is the majority of it. You know what I'm saying? How I was bred. So now you go back and see the ancestors of those dogs. And then you'll find out pretty much of where your dog is coming from. So, for instance, just give you an example. Say if you got American line dogs, right? Your dog should be able to trace back to a certain select dogs. Tori, Maluka, Kokomo, Doro, also, and a few others. Your dog should be able to trace back to that stuff. Real talk. It should be able to trace back to those dogs. Alert kennels. It should be able to trace back. Those are the foundation dogs that were here in America. And everything moved forward. Now, with American dogs having a little bit of import in them, back in the day... Of course, you know, the Cerebus stuff was introduced. So Prince should be in certain God's pedigree. There was um, Blanco stuff. He imported dogs over. There was a few other breeders. Linda Valentine also imported a few dogs over. So you're going to have a mixture of a few dogs that were imported dogs back in the day. Not much, but, you know, a few. So shouldn't be alarmed. Shouldn't be bugging out like Ed Holders did too. Bring a few dogs and bred them. So it, it was what it was. But then you still have certain dogs that don't have no import in them. No import. Like Aaron King. Like his dogs pr primarily has no import in it. No import. He's been breeding for like 20 something years. That is that man's bloodline now. That's his bloodline. That is his bloodline. The dogs are looking identical to those original dogs that came over. Like, yo, for real, for real. I got to commend that man. Job well done, bro. Like, on some real stuff. I got to commend that. I have to commend that. And everybody else, you know, like, that's dog breeding or whatever that we take it seriously. That, um, yo, we select certain dogs that coming from different, I mean, certain lines that we like. Or certain dogs that we definitely know that are replicating themselves. And we go forward and we use those dogs. So now, if we get, like... Like, funky with it, so to speak. Like, yo, I just want to add this dog because I want to improve my size on my dogs. 
So I added a little bit of this blood and I added a little bit of this to get size. And it didn't take away from my temperament and stuff like that and still move forward. You know, I say about three generations, four generations. They actually, some people, some dog enthusiasts will say that as soon as you buy the dog, you do a breeding. Those are you. That's considered your dogs. Like on some real stuff. Your name is on that shit. Like, yo, despite that, whatever's behind it, your name from that point on. So you're responsible. So this is another thing that dog enthusiasts will tell you. You have to be very selective. You have to be very careful of what you put. Yo, because your name is going on that. But if you don't care and you just out to get loot, sell drugs. Like on some real stuff. Sell drugs. Sell drugs. Like on some real stuff. Sell drugs. You'll make more money. Yeah, it's a big risk. But then you you playing with a risk too by breeding crappy dogs. Because then you get a crack pot, right? That either, like I said, if your dog had epilepsy, you know... The kid, his child gets hurt. He went to you, you telling him that it's not your fault, which it is, which it is. It's not your fault. You're not refunding no money. You don't want to hear it. This and that and the dirty. Your wig get pushed back. It can happen. Like, yo, like a lot of scenarios can happen. So like you're risking. So my thing is like do it right in the first place. So this way there's no risk. And then what I'm seeing that a lot of enthusiasts... You charge a whole lot of money. And then a lot of enthusiasts too because you know a lot of people don't know. You don't know about pedigrees and stuff like that. So this in case I bought it from a top kennel, right? Or a, a top breeder that's been in the game for a long time. And I would think that because I bought a dog from him that he bred the dog. But actually somebody has some other dogs. He bought those dogs and he just decided to sell the dogs. And I bought a dog and thinking, yo, I got a, I got a such and such dog. And this dude didn't even breed the dog. But I don't know how to breed pedigrees or nothing like that. So whatever he's selling, I'm buying. That's crazy. Learn. This is why I made that form them, this form them also too. So that you'll have an education because a lot of dudes didn't know. A lot of people didn't know. They don't know. You know what I'm saying? Even myself with the Italian dolls, I didn't care to know. Because when I came in the game 20 something years ago, the American dogs was what's up. So I had those dogs. I really didn't particularly care for the Italian dogs because when I saw the dogs come over, not saying Prince wasn't a, a dope dog. He was. In his own right, he definitely was. But I see a lot of bullcrap boxer crosses and I wasn't with that. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to sell me no bullshit band dog and say that that's a cause so. I don't play those. I don't care what breeder said and gave you what? Like, you're not going to play me like that. You're not. So, I had a real prejudice, I'm going to say, to, to, to keep it bluntly, against a lot of Italian imports. Some imports came over, they were perfectly nice dogs. A lot of imports came over, they were so-so. Real tall. And then there was a big influx by 2000. Like, yo, the dogs were mixed. A lot of them dogs were cold pedigree dogs. You couldn't trace their lineage back. A lot of breeders over there in Italy was just smacking papers on dogs and then sending them over. Sending them over. Because now they was making money, making a lot of money. And enthusiasts that didn't know, didn't have knowledge of anything. You're just buying dogs just because this guy. You know what I'm saying? Like you really got to know a dude's background, so to speak, man. Not a rumor. Not rumors. You have to know this individual. And again, you know, a lot of people say about car Semitic books that they're trash, they doodle, like, yo, I wouldn't read that stuff. A lot of stuff that he said in this books was actual fact. If you did a lot of research, like on some real stuff, like the European selling American people crappy dogs, he said it. He said it, not on the aspect with the Corso. But it's other breeds also that became popular. And the Europeans are sending us over trashy dogs. This is a, this is a fact. This is a fact. One, you're not going to fly back and forth over there like that. Because a lot of us don't have money like that. So you're not going to go back over there. Or you might get the dog imported. Don't know what you got. And the dog is just, it's crap. It ain't even primarily what the standard requires a dog to be. Like on some real stuff. Now, you got this dog. And of course, you know, like you invested in it, you want your money back. So you breed this dog. 
So you breed in poor quality dogs. So again, with the Italians adding the boxer into the bloodlines, they mess the dogs up. Just like with the Neo. You add an English Mastiff, Bloodhound, Great Dane, St. Bernard maybe. Like, like I don't know the, like the whole gist of it, but a lot of non-traditional dogs and a traditional dog that was perfectly fine and messed the dog up. Now you got individuals with the history aspect of it talking about, well, the Neo is supposed to be um, a, a, a low-maintenance dog. He's not supposed to be very active like that. That is a lie. That is a lie. The, the traditional Neo would keep up with a flock. It would be in the field all day. Like, yo, no, there was a heavy set of Neo and they stood back. That is a lie. That is a lie. First of all, in Neo history, the Neo did not come in the villas of the rich. They, they wasn't there. It was a hood dog. It was in the poor sections of town. Canada Presser. In the poorest of the poor. That's who owned these dogs. That's who owned the Neapolitan Mastiff. Real talk. They played by their own rules. The dogs were bred how they were bred. So now, if I had a Neo, a Molossala, I'm going to say, and it bred with a sheep dog, it was what it was. So now, if I had some puppies that came out like Molossalas, guess what? Those are Molossalas. I used them. So it was what it was. This is, the, this is the truth being manifested to you. Like it or not, you can go back, look at the Neapolitan's history, look at the dogs, period. And you will see kind of depressor, Corso, Neapolitan Mastiff, Cecilia Bracaro, and a few other breeds look identical the same. Like on some real stuff, man. There's no getting around that. Like these dogs were the same dogs, like on some real stuff. Yo, well, you know, the, the Sicilian dogs came in black and tan. That's shown and proven that a Neo could be black and tan. They were white Neos, like real talk. It wasn't sorted after, you know what I'm saying? Because now, as dogs became standardized, you know, other people felt that, well, we shouldn't use this. And nobody gave nobody authority to actually do that like that. Because on, a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on another scale of things, like, yo, this is what the dogs were. Like, on some real stuff. It's a traditional dog. Now, you don't believe me? I'm going to give you another scenario so that you can go look up. Cousin Breeze. The Romans preoccupied a lot of territory in Europe, right? So, Germany, Scandinavia, and all these other places. The Ger I mean, the Romans conquered these places, right? Any dogs that the Roman legions went through... Look at those, 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 those molossal dogs, those traditional sheep dog type of dogs. Look at those dogs. Those dogs are similar to Corsos, right? Similar to, to the traditional Neo. Just color-coded different. But still in all, and some come identical. Some you just don't get the blue color coat. But like I said, that black and tan situation, that's a traditional color. It's a traditional color. You get it in the lot. You get it in the um, molossalas. You get it in the sheep dog type. You get it in these dogs. These dogs have the ancient molossala in them. Research. Research. That's all you have to do is research. So it's not an opinion. It's not an opinion. That's factual. You don't believe me? Look it up. Simple as that. Look it up. Look it up. You saying that I'm wrong? Show and prove that I'm wrong. Bring your facts. Bring it. Bring it. Like, yo, I keep... Putting it out there like that. And I'm going to keep continuing to put it out there. Bring your facts. Do not give me no opinion stuff. Yo, what well, this enthusiast said this. Bring the facts. Hold on for a second.